to Newswatch. And let me say this yet again, the ABC national broadcaster is meant by law to be impartial. And that's because it gets $1 billion a year from all of us, left and right. Instead, it's been hijacked by the left and is now used to ram the left's global warming hysteria down people's throats. And last night, a disgraceful example from a show, Media Watch, that's meant to uncover bad journalism, not to actually perpetrate it. Now, host Paul Barry was horrified last night that it said that blaming the New South Wales bushfires on the Morrison government's alleged failure to cut the world's temperature was insane. And it is. The science is crystal clear. Cutting Australia's emissions, even completely, would make about zero difference to the temperature, the climate or to bushfires. As the chief scientist admits, we're simply too small. But now watch Barry from last night still imply that I was wrong. But he did it in a dishonest or maybe plain stupid way. And predictably, several other News Corp columnists and TV hosts were singing from the same song sheet, all claiming that increased Australian action to fight global warming is pointless. There are, for instance, the retired fire chiefs today who actually claimed, actually claimed, forget blaming the fierceness of the fires on the fact that not enough burning off was done to keep fuel levels in the bush under control. No, 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 no. The real problem, it seems, was that the Morrison government hadn't magically turned down the world's temperature by cutting Australia's tiny emissions. So, what is the truth? The CSIRO, the Bureau of Meteorology, fire chiefs and climate scientists all tell us the fires are getting worse. Now, actually, there's that rebuttal was no rebuttal at all to the point it actually made. Now, there's actually evidence that our fires are not getting worse. We've had far bigger and deadlier fires than earlier one. But that argument actually had nothing to do with the argument I'd put which was this, even if you do think these fires are getting worse and that global warming is to blame, which it isn't, there's no evidence that any cuts Australia could make to our emissions would have any effect on the world's temperature or the drought. Joining me to discuss this is Jared Henderson, head of the Sydney Institute, columnist with the Australian newspaper and author of the Media Watchdog blog out every Friday. Jared, thanks for joining me again. Look, I believe that if Paul Barry had any integrity or intelligence, he would have admitted I was actually right and not given the false impression that it proved me wrong. How do you explain what he did last night? Well, to put it in context, Mr Barry started off the program by criticising Prime Minister Scott Morrison and New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian. Now, that's not the role of Media Watch. I mean, that may be the role of political commentary, but that's not the role of a program that's supposed to be monitoring the media. And then step forward... Uh, a few minutes into the program and then there's this criticism of you. But in a sense, what you were doing was defending uh, the Prime Minister and others against the criticism that somehow the coalition government is responsible for the, for the intensity of the fires. Now, we all know that is complete nonsense. I mean, the Morrison government's been in, well, say, let's say the coalition being, the government's been in about six years. Uh, we, we, as you know, we produce 1.3% of, of emissions. Uh, the government cannot be responsible for the fires, even if you strongly disagree with the government on climate change. And all you were doing was simply pointing that out. You were simply saying that um, the, you, there's no correlation between the fires and the, the Australian government's policy on climate change, which I think virtually every um, sensible commentator in Australia would agree with. And even on Insiders last uh, Sunday, people like Lenore Towler agreed in the, in the first instance that, that the fires can't be attributed to the Morrison government. But Paul Barry on, on Monday is uh, criticising the Prime Minister, then he goes on to criticise others, and then he goes on to criticise you. But what he's essentially doing is just preaching a sermon. It's a kind of secular sermon which, we, which we've become familiar with. Um, if someone wants to see variety in a Media Watch program, Rupert Murdoch on uh, program uh, Media Buzz on Fox News. I mean, it has a presenter, Howard Kurtz, who's got opinions, but it also has panels and it has different views and matters are discussed. But here you have a taxpayer funded organisation that simply preaches a line. And what you got on Monday night was just a line being preached. Well, I am going to uh, yet again bother Ida Buttrose's inbox because the ABC is on a campaign here, which I've written about before. 
um, and this sliming has got to stop. This is outrageous. Taxpayer money being used to propagate untruths with almost no right of reply. I find it extraordinary, a disgrace. Here's another example from Paul Barry show last night. I think shows his lack of intellectual integrity, and it's one I think is shared more widely by many ABC presenters. Here he is being horrified by what is in fact a plain fact, but horrified that it's a fact stated by a sceptic, in this case, Professor Ian Plymer. Have a listen. An example from Ian Plymer in The Australian, urging us not to pollute minds with carbon fears, telling us... There are no carbon emissions. If there were, we could not see, because most carbon is black. Hard to believe, isn't it? What I find extraordinary about that, Jared, is that Plymer is absolutely correct. Any science student from year eight would know carbon is a solid, like coal, usually black. The emissions behind global warming, however, they're a gas, mainly carbon dioxide, like, that's invisible. Invisible. How could Paul Barry scoff at a scientific fact? What do you imply is a... Is, is a... Uh, scientifically qualified and what he was simply doing was distinguishing between carbon and carbon dioxide and Paul Barry just missed the point entirely and, and gave Ian Plymer a lecture. Um, I might say in relation to your earlier comment, uh, there's not much point contacting Ida Butteros, I mean, she's the chair of the ABC but the ABC is not run by its chair and is not run by its board, it is run by its managing director and managerial team. Uh, they're the people who make the decisions but uh, so far, nothing much has changed under the new chairmanship. But uh, you, you get this all the time on, on, on Media Watch, and uh, Paul Barry bangs on constantly about this issue, and no other view is allowed to be heard. I mean, I think that's the Jerry, important point. No, hang on. Uh, you know, the reason I, uh, cont that I'm bothering her now, she must think I'm a stalker, but I want to prove to her yeah. every single week I've got something to complain about in terms of the sliming and misrepresentations and the outright uh, deceits or deceptions is this. I never again want to hear Ida Buttrose, as chairman of the ABC, declare in public, as she did before, she can't see bias. If she cannot see bias with what I'm, the examples I'm giving in her inbox, there's a problem with Ida herself. But um, so Paul Barry, we've established, does not disprove sceptics. He simply scoffs and scoffs even when they tell yeah. the, ag the exact truth, which I find extraordinary. But he also abuses them, Jared, like this last night. Offers and denialists. Shock jock Alan Jones, crusaders against the science, News Corp's campaign against the facts, those know-it-alls. Well, there you go, Jared. Well, I the... mean, abuse and yeah. no facts, no reason. Yeah. Well, it's the political tactic of the sneer, which you see constantly on many number of ABC programmes, and Paul Barry's in, in for the sneer and the ridicule, and again, as we've said before, there is no right of reply. Now, the previous managing director, before he got the job, Mark Scott, told me um, at a function at the Sydney Institute that he was going to bring about a right of reply to Media Watch, that people who had been criticised on Media Watch would have a right of reply. But when he got into the job, he just got rolled over by the staff collective, or the Soviet, as I call it, uh, at, uh, at the various organisations. He just got rolled and just went under the bed and forgot about it. But Mark Scott was on a promise to do that. Um, and that would be an important reform, but it would require a very strong management team to reform Media Watch. But it's gone on now for uh, a quarter of a century or, or so, and it's always had left-wing presenters, and it's pretty much been in, in the same format for decades, and despite promises of reform, no one has the intellectual courage to reform it, in spite of the fact that the managing director of the ABC can, and the managerial team can be very strong if they want to be strong. But if they don't want to be strong, nothing's going to happen. Well, nothing is happening, uh, Jared. Look, I was going to talk to you about an amazing example of bias against Donald Trump. I'm going to leave that to tomorrow's show because it needs some time. It's delicious. But before I go, back to the ABC and its own bias and its uh, groupthink. On Sunday's Insiders, every single panellist agreed with former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's claims last week that he could have won the election last May if the Liberals hadn't been so dumb as to sack him. I think we've got the grab of this exchange here. Straw poll and all, would he have? Probably. Yeah, my view is he probably might have, yeah. I think he would have had a chance. 
Uh, Jared, were you impressed by that poll? Three out of three ABC panellists predicting that Malcolm Turnbull could also have done what Scott Morrison indeed did and won the last election. Three out of three. <laughs> Well, I wasn't surprised. I think, to be fair, if you went around the press gallery or people who are close to the press gallery, you'd probably get the same response because, essentially, they supported Malcolm Turnbull and didn't want him to be replaced either by Peter Dutton or by Scott Morrison. But as I recall, many of these people were saying before the election that Labor would win. In other words... Ah! Wait, wait. <laughs> let me interrupt you oh, right okay. there. Let me interrupt you right there. Through some uh, prescience here, I uh, detected where you were going mainly because you gave me the tip. As you say, every panellist there had predicted Labor would win the election that they now predict Turnbull would or could have won. Have a listen. If I had to guess, the net effect of it will still be a Labor victory. Labor will pick up more than just those marginal seats. I put the odds of a, um, a Labor win pretty high at this stage. I'd say probably the second possible option is a big Labor win. OK, they couldn't predict that Labor would lose the election. Now we're supposed to believe that they, their prediction that, Lay, that Turnbull could have won it. Uh, does that follow? Well, no, it doesn't. What it suggests is that just as before the election, after the election, many of the journalists who report national politics don't understand the Australian electorate. The election in May was essentially won in northern Tasmania and in Queensland north of Brisbane. These were the areas where Malcolm Turnbull did very badly in 2016 and Scott Morrison did well in 2019. Uh, the, the Labor had effectively framed Malcolm Turnbull as a multimillionaire who lived in a harbourside mansion and who was out of touch. And as Labor now concedes in the report that recently came forward, Labor now concedes that when the leadership changed, their tactics should have changed and they didn't. So Labor, na Labor now understands why they did so poorly in the election and why there was a problem with Scott Morrison and I think it, uh, why there was that, that, that would not have been there with, with Malcolm Turnbull. So Labor understands it, but so many of the journalists who report Australian national politics do not understand it. <laughs> nicely put, nicely put. Uh, uh, look, that, that's absolutely true. Now, I can understand why some might think, oh, Malcolm Turnbull could have won it. I, well, I don't actually understand that argument. But for the ABC to find three out of three that actually hold on to that belief, that's extraordinary. Jared Henderson, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you.